Okay, uh, you can find these on the internet these days. Uh, eBay has them, Banggood has them. I bought this off of Banggood. It took me three months to get. <laughs> so it just came in yesterday. It's an RF demo kit and it's uh, targeted at the Nano VNA. So it has a bunch of uh, circuits and it's got uh, 18 circuits. There's a low pass filter, a high pass filter, a band pass filter, a band notch filter, a 33 ohm load, a 75 ohm load, capacitor, inductor, capacitor with resistance, I believe, capacitor with inductance, a capacitor with resistance and inductance, a capacitor, inductor, across to resistor. It's got an open short load, a through, and a 6 dB, uh, no, a 5 dB attenuator and a 10 dB attenuator. So it's all kind of self-inclusive. So it comes with some uh, cables, which are uh, SMA on the, uh, on the uh, nano side. And there are these little press-on connectors usually used for antennas and stuff and cell phones and things. Um, and so there's tiny, tiny little connectors on the board. Now, when you get these things, uh, they don't want to go on the first time. It feels like you're going to break them and you might break them if you don't have them lined up exactly right. So make sure they're lined up exactly, exactly right and then press them on and they will finally kind of stretch out a bit. But it's really, really scary and these things aren't, aren't that much fun. So one of the bad things about the kit. Um, but because we have this uh, length of coax, and a funny connector, it'd be nice to be able to calibrate at the end of the um, of the cables being used, and you get you get two cables. So they supply you with the open short load to do the actual calibration. So you can do the uh, open short load and through. Uh, so that's built in. And when you do the isolation, uh, it's recommended that you have a load on channel zero and channel one. And so what you can do in this case is you can put, uh, uh, you'll, you'll have channel zero already on load, and then you can put the channel one on one of the pads, the uh, minus five dB or 10 dB, they're 50 ohms. So you can just plug it in over there and, uh, and then do the isolation calibration. And so uh, I'm not going to show calibration. Everybody's seen that before, but I do want to show you each one of these things. So uh, in general, these things are operating uh, below 500 megahertz. So I'm going to calibrate from uh, 10 kilohertz to 500 megahertz. And then we can go through uh, each one of these circuits. Uh, let, me, let me first uh, change the camera position and show you each one of these up close. All right, uh, so this is the uh, low pass filter. It says 30 megahertz. And here are these tiny little connectors, connector and connector. And then here's the Pi network in between. Um, this one is a high pass filter, 100 megahertz. And uh, here's its circuit. Um, there's a band pass filter, which is a, is a funny little package. I don't know where they got this part, but it's a uh, uh, 433 megahertz band pass filter. And it's in a, a little a little package, so uh, got those somewhere. And and the same with the notch filter. There's a 6.5 megahertz notch filter, and again, it's a uh, uh, some type of device that already has that in there. Uh, 33 ohm and 75 ohm, just to make sure that your uh, Smith chart's working correctly. Uh, capacitor. So just a capacitor to ground. And this one is an inductor, inductor to ground, and capacitor resistor to ground, uh, capacitor inductor to ground, capacitor, and then a uh, RC or RL uh, network resistor inductor to ground. And then this one is capacitor inductor across a resistor to ground. And then here is the uh, Short, the open, the load, just 50 ohms to ground, the through, just a little uh, connection, and then a 5 dB attenuator and a 10 dB attenuator. So 
Let's get the uh, nano calibrated and we will measure each one of these. Okay, first we'll connect the short and see if that's working. And that looks good. The uh, point is over here on the left hand side of the Smith chart. So that's, that's looking good. So now what I found is to remove these things without breaking anything, I put a little screwdriver blade underneath uh, the connector and then pry up. So that will uh, save you from breaking anything. Uh, the open's not too exciting. Let's do a load. And the load is nice and, oops, nice and centered on the, uh, on the Smith chart. So that's looking good. All right, let's do up at the top here. All right, and the other connector will go there. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. I think I'm gonna to have to change camera angles here. Okay, we're gonna be looking at the low pass filter, it's supposed to be 30 megahertz. And here's a graph of the low pass filter. Now to get this graph, uh, we need to uh, turn on the blue trace and the blue trace should be set to channel one log mag 10 dB. So format, you need to make sure it's log mag and we can use the marker this one doesn't want to drag markers very easily. I don't know, this uh, display isn't working great on this particular device, but 30 megahertz right there at the knee, and then it uh, cuts off everything above that. So here's 145 megahertz, so looks like it's working pretty good. All right, let's look at the next circuit. Uh, the next circuit's going to be the 100 megahertz high pass. So let me, okay. And uh, here you see that we have a high pass filter and right around there is a hundred, there we go, hundred megahertz. So that seems to be measuring, that seems to be measuring pretty good. So remember this is a through measurement. We're outputting uh, the signals on channel one and receiving them on channel, uh, ch through channel zero and receiving them on channel one. And so if there's any attenuation between the two, this is what's being plotted. So let's move over to the next one. Um, the next one is the 433 megahertz uh, bandpass. That should be interesting. So let's move our connectors over here without damaging anything. This thing is really, really hard to... Okay, so we see some type of band over here. So obviously we're not uh, looking correctly. There seems to be something funny here. And you know, again, this Nano VNA, I really don't like the new software. It's skipping data points and stuff. It just doesn't seem to be operating as well as the old software. So maybe you should check this and upgrade it again or something. But let's uh, zoom in a bit. Let's uh, change the, let's change the stimulus. We're gonna center on 433 three megahertz. And there we go. Uh, looks like we have some type of, some type of filter. And let's change the span to, oh, I don't know, 20 megahertz. Just guessing. Yeah. So it is some type of bandpass filter and there's some ringing out here. All right. So what's the next one that we have? Uh, the next one is a 6.5 megahertz notch filter. So let's... Okay, I was having lots of problems getting those little connectors on correctly, but I finally did. So they are fiddly. Uh, it's one of the bad things about this kit. Those connectors are very, very fiddly. So here you see our notch filter right there around... Uh, uh, Six and a half as they claim. Let's measure it. So it's yep, six and a half megahertz exactly. So that filter is working out good. Okay, so what's next on the uh, 
What's next on the thing here is a, um, a 33 ohm, 75 ohm. Let's see, is there any other passes? Let's see, these are all Smith chart things. Oh, here, down here, we can do the, we can do the attenuators. So let's see if the attenuators are working correctly. And then we'll change over to the uh, Smith chart display and, and see how that works. All right. So this one is supposed to be a five, a five dB attenuator. And there we go. It's measuring 6.82, not five. And let's measure the 10. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's measuring 11.74, but nice and flat. Okay, so now the, next, the other tests we're gonna do are all Smith chart tests. So let's back up, go to display. Oops, display, trace. Let's turn off that blue trace. Let's turn on the green trace, which is the Smith chart. All right, right there at 50 ohms because we're measuring an attenuator. So that's good, it's measuring 50 ohms. Okay, so let's go, oh dear, this connector is stuck. There we go. Okay, so let's go to the first Smith chart thing, which is uh, 33 ohms. Let's see if we can measure 33 ohms. And it moved over here, and we can read up here 33 ohms perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna move over one, which is the 75 ohm. Uh, and it's there, and we can read up here 75.2 ohms, very good. All right, let's move down here. And this one should be more fun. Okay, so this one, is a capacitor. I don't know what its value is, but um, it should move along the outside here. So you can see we're going from uh, 10 kilohertz to 500 megahertz. So we're going Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sp my span isn't right. I'm sorry. We're still on that um, 6.5 span. So we're going to go to stimulus. We're going to start. I put in zero, it defaults to 10 kilohertz. And we're going to stop at 500 megahertz. 500, zero, jeez. <laughs> there we go. Ah, there we go. So we're now we're going from uh, 10 kilohertz to 500 megahertz. Um, and that's the path it's following. Now we're gonna go to an inductor to ground. That was a capacitor to ground. Now we're gonna go the next one over, which is inductor to ground, if I can get the connector on. There we go. Okay, so inductor to ground is up in the positive. Positive direction, direction is inductance. Negative direction is capacitance on a Smith, Smith chart. It has a little bit of resistance too. That's why it falls down. So instead of following the curve, it falls down. Okay, so the next one we're gonna take a look at. So we, we looked at these two. We looked at the, oops, I'm sorry. Hard to keep everything on camera. Um, we looked at the, at the capacitor and the inductor. Now we're gonna look at it capacitor with a series resistance. So that should look like the first one, except it should spiral inwards because of the added added resistance. And yeah, there we go. So we're sort of following the outside curve. We're now following this curve. Um, these circles on the Smith chart are uh, circles of constant impedance. So it's following, it's following that curve. Okay, so the next one over is the same thing, only with an uh, oh no, it's quite a bit different. It's a capacitor and an inductor to ground. So uh, it's going around, it has capacitance and inductance. So it's going around that circle and there's a little bit of resistance, so it's not following a perfect circle. All right, so that was 
that was this one. Now we're going to go to this one, which is capacitor, resistor, inductor. That one should be that one should be very interesting. Uh, get the connector on right. There we go. And it looks just like the picture on the uh, PC board. Uh, we're coming down here. So capacitance, and then it curls up with the inductance and goes to 50 ohms at, uh, I'm assuming at 500 megahertz. Yep. So at 500 megahertz ends up back at uh, 50 ohms, which is nice. And now we're going to look at another complex one. Uh, this one is capacitor, inductor, resistor. Let's hook that one up. And we're getting a circle out there. That's interesting. And we are at 50 ohms, where it is going to be resonant. So it's resonant at 460 megahertz. So it's like a tank circuit. All right, so that's a brief, brief introduction of this little board, if you want to go buy one. Uh, they're really cheap. I don't know if you can get them as easily as I did. I mean, or have the problems that I had. It took me three months to get this stupid thing. They aren't, they're not very expensive, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, maybe there's no stock of them or something. Maybe, they're, maybe they fixed that problem by now. Uh, this one says NWDZ Rev 0110 RF demo kit. And on the back side, it has a, a picture of a Smith chart and a bunch of writing in Chinese. Well, I was doing some tests. I was going to try to compare it to my HP uh, analyzer and see what kind of measurements we got on the on the filters. I did make a couple of measurements. I'll, I'll insert them right here. Um, this is the 6 megahertz notch filter. And the other one is the uh, 433 megahertz bandpass filter. So those are measurements on an HP um, 8921. And then I was going to go and make a heads-to-heads -heads comparison with an Ana VNA, and I was getting really weird results, and I couldn't figure out why. My calibration wasn't working. As it turns out, one of my cables broke already. Those little connectors are just not robust. And uh, so I, I tried to open this one up, and there's a little, a little piece in there. Let's see if I can. Sorry, I'm in the way of the camera. Um, oh heck, I can't get it out now. Anyway, there's a little uh, piece of very soft, uh, soft plastic in there with um, the pin on that center conductor, and it's not soldered in place. It's just a press fit, and it wasn't making contact any longer, so it had shifted. So I thought I could take it apart, so I bent this back, and I thought I could take that little center piece out and recrimp it, or maybe put a little dab of solder in there, and then it just broke. This is the, this is the little, uh, little piece that it has to has, has to um, make contact with. And like I said, it's just kind of it's kind of a press fit in there. It's just a very, very gentle fit. And it stopped making contact, and now this cable is dead, so I can't play with a new toy any longer. Three months waiting, <laughs> and now it's already dead. So I'll see if I can find some of these connectors and try to put a new connector on here. But, uh, oh, I think you have to have a special crimp tool, and uh, it's just not worth it. So uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend this, uh, this setup. Um, it seems like it'd be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun if it were all set up with SMA connectors, but with these tiny little press-on things, it's just, uh, these things are meant to be pressed on once and, and never again, but uh, on, off, on, off, on, off. Yeah, you will break them. <laughs>